Hi, right, and welcome back to Heimler's History. Well, we're still in Unit 4 of our AP World History curriculum, and if you need to catch up, you can see the videos I've made on Unit 4 linked in the description below. In this video, we're going to talk about how as these empires began to grow during this period, which is to say 1450 to 1750, they experienced resistance to their rule. Some of the resistance came from inside the empire, from their own people, and other resistance came from the colonies that they set up. And basically, it boils down to this. Mo territory, mo problems. Let's get to it. So we're going to talk about two different flavors of resistance to imperial expansion. The first is the general resistance that any empire faces when it conquers other people. And the second kind of resistance is the kind that came from the enslaved people of the empire. So let's start with the general resistance we can observe during this period. As Portugal expanded their empire into Africa, they experienced some resistance from their allies. One of their allies was the ruler of Indongo, Queen Ana Nzinga. Her kingdom was plagued by slave raids from Portugal and attacks from neighboring tribes. So she entered into an agreement with Portugal in which the Portuguese agreed agreed to cease the slave raids and to offer protection against her neighboring tribes. This next piece isn't something you're going to be tested on, but I can't help myself but mention it. During her talks with the Portuguese, Queen Nzinga proved herself to be a very powerful woman. For this meeting, the Portuguese brought in chairs for them to sit on and a mat for the queen to sit on. And of course, this is the way they communicated social dominance. We are higher than you. And seeing this arrangement, Queen Nzinga ordered one of her servants to get down on all fours to act as a makeshift chair for her. And from that makeshift chair, she talked diplomacy eye to eye with the Portuguese. Mm. That's some tasty sauce. But even after their agreement was made, the Portuguese could not help themselves but continue to take land from her kingdom. And so she allied with the Dutch and incited a rebellion against the Portuguese and resisted their influence for the next few decades. All right, let's look at some Russian resistance. You may recall that the peasants who worked the land were called serfs. Those were the folks who were tied to the land, owned by the nobles, and they worked that land for little or no pay. And the serfs were practically slaves because once that land was sold, the serfs were sold along with it. And as you can imagine, a system like this could only go on for so long. And in 1770, there was a fierce show of resistance to it. Southwest of Moscow, near the Black Sea, there was a haven for runaway serfs, and these folks were called the Cossacks, and they happened to be skilled fighters. Well, in 1774, they rose up in rebellion against the system of serfdom perpetuated by Catherine the Great, and this became known as the Pugachev Rebellion. And this group of serfs actually managed to gain some ground, but eventually they were crushed by the superior power of the Russian state. And as a consequence, Catherine clamped down even harder on the serfs in order to prevent another uprising. And something similar happened in the Mughal Empire, except there it was fueled by religion. You may recall that the Mughal rulers were Muslims, while the majority of the Indian population was still Hindu. And eventually there was a group of Hindu warriors called the Maratha, who rose up to resist what they felt was an invasion of their beliefs. And in this case, the uprising was successful. They brought the Mughal Empire to an end, and established the Maratha Empire in its place. And over in the Americas, there were similar uprisings against empires. You know, I'm starting to think as a general rule, people don't like being conquered by empires. <laughs> In the Spanish colonies of North America, the Pueblo and the Apache Indians fought against the Spanish in what became known as the Pueblo Revolt. The Indians had grown tired of the Spanish trying to force conversions to Christianity, and so they killed hundreds of Spanish colonizers and burned their churches to the ground. However, about 10 years later, the Spanish came right back and reconquered the territory. Up in the British colonies, we have a resistance called Metacom's War. And this was the final large-scale attempt of the natives of North America to rid their lands of the British. The British, however, wanted to decide victory and subjugated most of the remaining people. And since we're in North America, let's shift and talk about that second flavor of colonial resistance, namely the resistance that came from enslaved people. So African slaves have been growing in number for years in the British colony. And the general attitude of their enslavers went something like this. Because the enslaved people are a lower order of human beings, they're content with their servitude. But the Stono Rebellion of 1739 put the kibosh on all that kind of thing. In the Stono Rebellion, 20 enslaved people gathered at the Stono River in South Carolina, Fed up with the conditions of their servitude, they raided a warehouse where they killed the white workers and put their heads on the steps outside. Then they moved through towns killing white people as they went, and all the while they were chanting, Liberty! Liberty! Eventually, this little gathering grew to about 100, and they fought with the British for a week. Now, ultimately, the British won, and as a result, they made life much harder for their enslaved workforce. So those are the two different flavors of resistance to imperial expansion that you need to know for Unit 4 of AP World History. You should know that Heimler's history is in part made possible by the generous folks over at Patreon who support me month to month. If you'd like to join them in supporting this channel, then get your clicky finger out and click right here. If you want me to keep making videos, then subscribe and come along. Heimler out.